Welcome to Cincinnati. Thank you so much. My dad was born here. Really? Really, really. Now, how long did he live in Cincinnati? Two years, so not long, really? but he was born here. Right. Now, you're from back east, right? I am from Connecticut, yes. Yeah, right. Okay. So, you were the young one with the big, big voice early on on the show that everybody just loved. When you look back at that experience now, does it seem like a blur? It, it seems very far away. I mean... It seems it seems far away, but at the same time, I can remember like each moment of it, the audition process, and what was going through my mind. And when you go through the audition process, there's so many people there, and you never imagine that it's going to be you that's going to be chosen. So I kind of just did this thing where I said, one ticket at a time. That's what I'm going to do, one ticket at a time. And I always I always prepare myself for the worst, so that if the worst happens. I'm not that upset about it and then if something good happens I feel that much better so it's it's a blur in the fact that I can't believe it even happened and I can't believe that I'm here now now did you were you tutored or when you were out or did you have to go back to high school what happened after the show um well during the show me and Aaron since we were minors we had uh, like three to five hours of school uh, every day. So uh, I was in my senior year of high, of high school when I was coming into the show, so I was able to finish that, and right before the tour started, I was actually able to go back home and attend my graduation. And how was that? I mean, how did, how did they, they, your friends back at school, when you got back, how did they treat you? Well, I, I decided to keep it a surprise, so I didn't tell any of my friends that I was coming back. So when I, I told one of my best friends, Christine, I said, Okay, um, I'm sending you a graduation gift, and it's gonna come FedExed. And so I had, I came home and I had my parents call her and stall her on the phone while I drove over to her house. And then uh, my mom said, "Oh yeah, Katie's dad is outside with your FedEx package." So when she came out, I had a sign on me that said FedEx, and she cried, and it was funny. But um, yeah, nobody. I mean, everybody's back home. My friends still treat me the same, which is great. So I still have that kind of sense of normalcy. Good. All right, let's do a couple of uh, listener questions here, okay? Michelle wants to know what was the absolute funnest or best part about being on Idol? Uh, being able to meet all these amazing people. I mean, the top ten idols and all the other idols that I was able to meet are amazing people and these guys that I've been on tour with are like my best friends so it's gonna be hard leaving them tomorrow oh, wait tomorrow is the the, the final day of the tour day no the tour way. is tomorrow so what happens what happens to Katie then um, I'm actually I'm moving to Los Angeles and I'm gonna be writing and hopefully putting out an album I don't care how long it takes but I'm gonna do it good for you um, Teddy have there been any relationships that have sparked because of American Idol Hmm. And if you don't want to answer that, you don't have to. No, I, I honestly, I don't. I don't. I mean, relationships and the fact that I've made very many friends throughout the experience. All right. Uh, Angela wants to know the scariest moment of the year uh, on the show. On the show. Uh, probably just auditioning is probably the scariest thing because after when you're on the show, you've already had the moments of being through Hollywood Week, which is definitely the most difficult. So the whole audition process from going from the stadium all the way through Hollywood Week is just so nerve-wracking and you can't eat, sleep, breathe. It's just so hard. But I mean, since I made it through that, I think I can make it through anything. <laughs>